Darling Nikki sent me this link to this video. Um, it actually comes from Colchester City Council who are filming the questions that the public are giving but to be honest it's almost like you, you say your bit and they go well we don't agree with you <laughs> yeah or interesting we'll think about some of those ideas hmm but I suppose if you don't try you won't get anywhere and I really like what this person says because I don't think these people in front of us have realized what we've realized but correct not political put this out but I went to the County Council and found it myself I just thought it was worth listening to I'm so pleased there are some awake people carry on everybody next I have Ian Drew good evening uh, my question is really for the chairman um, your strategic plan for Colchester 2023 and onwards is all based around what you see as a climate emergency and your lust to achieve net zero. It's now more important than ever that all councillors fully understand what this means. There are, There is other information you need to consider. If you knew that man-made climate change was not true, would you still go ahead with this strategy? Agenda 21, 2021, now 2030, and the whole 15-minute city ideology is not grassroots initiative. You know it and we know it. It's a global initiative. The C40 Cities International Network of City Mayors, founded in October 2005, when Ken Livingston was London Mayor, and now chaired by Sadiq Khan, is the template for the Great Reset. This is a top-down global plan to roll out the 17 Sustainable Development Goals under Net Zero. Whilst many in the Green Party and other climate activ activists are comfortable with Net Zero, it's doubtful that they understand the long-term implications of what this means. The aim of Agenda 2030 is absolute zero to be achieved by 2050 as laid out in the document produced by UK Fires and published in 2019. I have a copy of that if you want it. Absolute zero will mean no flying out of the UK, no shipping out of the UK. We will literally be imprisoned in our own island. Wood burners, gas and other fossil fuel appliances removed from every home, no fossil fueled vehicles, road travel to be 60% of the 2020 level, there will only be electric vehicle and train travel for people and freight. This is what top-down global control is all about. But it doesn't stop there. This has been planned since the 1970s and we will be living in a zero trust world. We will have a digital ID with all our data linked to it by the end of this year. Central bank digital currency will soon follow. All this has got nothing to do with being green. Then we have traffic restrictions that clog up the road network and add to pollution. Just an excuse to bring in movement charging and encourage us to stay at home in our 15 minute or, or smart cities. The propaganda for this has already started with media advertising that says, staying at home is the new going out. But not many people realize what is happening. We will have a city move account linked to our phone and enforced by cameras, which we know are already being installed. These will track our every movement and we will be charged if we exceed our carbon footprint. Is this really the kind of future that you want for your children and grandchildren? So I ask again, if you knew that man-made climate change was not true, would you go ahead with this strategy? So let's have a proper public debate and let the people decide on what sort of future we want not something forced upon us by central government who seem to have an endless supply of money to fund this anarchy. Total control by 1% who own 80% of the world's worth and still want more. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll have to agree to disagree on some of those comments. This, this 
committee and council did declare a climate emergency. If you don't believe in climate emergency, that's absolutely fine. Um, but we do. Um, I can confirm there's no plans for congestion charge or 15 minute cities being talked about in Colchester at all. As yet. Um, as yet, you know, 10 years it might happen. This, but this it's is why we want a proper public debate. Well, so you can put your side and we can put our side. I'm sure you've got experts you can use as have we. Well, if, if you'd like a public debate, our biggest debate is when we have a general election and you're welcome to stand yeah, candidates with your beliefs. That's not and... what I mean. We want the people who believe in this climate emergency to tell us why and we will, we will bring our experts to tell you our side of it. Oh, and it's you're... already all yeah, right, course. you're just tutting and... You're more than welcome to set up your own debate and invite whoever you like from the opposition right. uh, and whoever you like who agrees with yourself. It's not something you would entertain then? Um, not us as a council, I'm afraid, but you'd be you'd be more than welcome to hire a venue in Colchester and have a big debate on it and and organise your own people to come along. And would you then come along? Uh, if you invited me and I was free, right. I guess I'd be happy to come along. We'll okay. see what happens. So we, we need to know when you're all going to be free because we want you all there. <laughs> That's what a proper debate is about, because otherwise well, it's just being pushed through by government, which which is directing you, and we're not... An election won't give us a say about it, will it? There's two parties in the, in the election, and they're both on the same side when it comes to this. Okay. I haven't got much more to add. If, if you want to host a debate and invite people from Colchester or around the country, you're more than welcome to. Right. Thank, cool. you. Thank you very much for your contribution.